how to optimize the distance, bring Asia and Europe together, and expand the market's geography. Coming up in the program, Road to the Future. As a joke, the first miner of this region is considered to be a small rodent, the ground squirrel. According to the legend, while chasing this animal, the shepherd Apat Bajanov wandered deep into the steppes. When it got cold, he decided to start a fire in order to warm up. Next to the fire, there was a small black rock, which after some time caught on fire. This is how Karaganda's coal basin was discovered, and it is considered to be the biggest in Kazakhstan and one of the largest in the world. Hello, my name is Oleg Boldarev, and you're watching The Route to the Future. At some point in time, the Karaganda coal basin was part of the Soviet Union Troika. In terms of its reserves, it was behind only the Siberian Kuzbas and Ukrainian Donbass. The Karaganda coal basin is comprised of six large sections Jalin, Kuznetsky, Kumoskodok, Kushokin, Molodyozhny, and Shubarkol. Among them, the Shubarkol deposit field is considered to be the most unique, and it earned the status thanks to the quality of the coal that is extracted here. It has a low ash content, 8%, and at the same time is distinguished for its high energy conversion efficiency, 5,500 kilocalories per kilogram. The Shubarkol deposit field is located five kilometers away from Karaganda. It is considered to be one of the youngest in the country. It was opened in 1983. By the way, with the development of precisely this deposit field in 2003, the development of the markets of Western European countries commenced. Annually, up to 10 million tons of coal are extracted here. Out of them, 5.6 million tons are exported. The company Shubarkol Komer is engaged in the development of these two sections of this deposit field. It has corporate ties with the Eurasian Group. The company uses an open process for the extraction of coal. After the opening up of the coal beds, we remove the barren rock. Then we get to the coal. We do some explosive works. Then send the EKG-5 excavator to the bunker. Then we send the wagons further on along the conveyor line. And then deliver them to the consumers. The main client is Russia. Russia's regions, even though they have their own minefields, prefer to buy the coal from Shubarkol, which is of higher quality and more energy efficient. The coal is also highly valued on the markets of European countries. Among importers, there is UK, Finland, Poland, Italy and Germany. In 2006, the Shubarkol Komer company commenced the first stage of the production diversification. The enterprise Sarar Kaspets Cox was established at the base of the coal deposit field. It specializes in the production of semi coke. Our enterprise is engaged in the production of semi coke, which is used as a restorative agent by the Ferro Ally plants, Kasrom, Aluminum Kazakhstan, Kastink, and other enterprises. After the low carbonization process, two byproducts are obtained, coal tar and coke gas. Partially, this gas is used for the heating of the plant's departments and pyrolysis process. The coal tar, as a ready-made product, is exported abroad. The second stage of diversification from the Shubar Coal Company is the establishment of a number of plants for the production of products with high value added. The pilot project of the experimental industrial production of activated coal. We're also launching a humate project. This concerns fertilization and semi-functional sorbents. By the way, the fertilizers will be used in the production of vegetables in protected grounds. According to experts, on the one hand, the development of new types of products will provide an impulse to the development of greenhouse farming of the Karaganda region. On the other, the enterprise will find another niche for its exports. The diversification process is conducted whilst considering the launch of the railway line Shobarkol Arkalek. Within the framework of this infrastructural project, which was realized relatively recently, the distance between the station Shobarkol and the city Arkalek will be shorter by a thousand kilometers. The future plans include sending around 7 million there, and this is the far abroad of Russia mainly. That is why today this is an instrument for the development of Shobarkol. 
It was not just this enterprise that benefited from the launching of the infrastructural project Shubarkol Arkalek. The town of Shubarkol, which is located not far from the coal deposit field, also got a second wind. 90% of the town's residents are employed, 70% of them work at Shoporkol Kumur, and 20% at the Kazakhstan Timirjoli Railway Company. In 2015, for the workers of the railway station Shoporkol, eight two-story cottages were built. Today, another four houses and a new school are being built. The history of the development of Shoporkol in a lot of ways reminds of the story of other populated towns of the Karaganda region, which turned from workers' towns into small sectoral centers. Coming up next, the field for growth for monotowns. The definition of the term monotown is in its name. This is a monoprofile populated town, the economic core of which is one plant or a couple of enterprises which are tightly connected with each other. Out of the 27 monotowns of Kazakhstan, eight are located in the Karaganda region, and this puts it in the first place in the country. Considering the prospects, the monotowns of the Karaganda region are divided into two development groups. Jeskazgan, Timirtau and Balhash are monotowns with a high potential, and Satpaev, Abai, Karajal, Saran and Shakhtinsk with an average potential. By the way, the monotowns of the Karaganda region contribute 75% of the entire volume of the industrial production of the region. Such a high indicator is caused by the economic development of these cities. In turn, this economic growth is connected with the active development of mineral resources. In terms of world production and consumption volumes, copper is in third place after iron and aluminum. Kazakhstan has around 6% of the world volume of this non-ferrous metal, and the biggest deposit fields are located in the industrial territory of Jaskazgan, a city which has the unofficial status of the copper capital of Kazakhstan. From Kazakh, Jaskazgan translates as a place where copper was dug. For the first time, this word was mentioned in the daily notes of Captain Richkov. After they were published, a number of expeditions were organized to Jaskazgan to confirm its riches. This happened at the end of the 18th century. In the middle of the 19th century, the Jaskazgan copper deposits were officially registered by the Yekaterinburg industrialist Nikol Nushakov, after it was developed by foreign companies from the UK and France. With the coming of the Soviet Union, the deposit field was nationalized. Its modern history commenced with the country's independence. Kazakhstan's biggest company of the sector became its equity investor. Coming up next, the underground treasure house of the minor town. Satpaev is one of the biggest monotowns of Kazakhstan. It is located 15 kilometers away from Jaskazgan. Its specialization, ore mining. Eighty percent of Satpaev's population is in one way or another connected with the ore mining industry. That is why one can confidently say that for the majority of the residents, the mines are like a second home. The mine number 55 is considered to be one of the oldest in the Karaganda region. Over half a century of its existence, many types of different technologies have been tried out. Today, this mine is part of the East Jaskazgan mine of the Kazakh Mus Corporation. During the technology shift, we have around 50 people. During the repair shift, more. This includes drillers, blasters and the diesel section. This mine is unique in terms of technologies used. They are on par with world standards. For example, the special equipment drills the mine, then pumps glue into the hole and screws a meter-long bolt into it. Each anchor takes 40 seconds to dry and can handle a load of up to 11 tons. By the way, before, instead of glue, cement was used here, and it took 18 hours to dry. Thanks to the new technology, the speed of work at the mine increased by 1,620 times. The first stage is airing it out, then ensuring that it is safe, unloading, drilling and blast works. 
From here we extract the ore and then it is shipped out to the ore stockpile. From there it is unloaded with an excavator at the plant. The Jeskazan copper smelting plant, that is. This enterprise has four production departments, smelting, sulfuric, electrolysis, and preparation of fusion material. Today we produce around 110,000 tons of cathode copper per year, and 97% of it is of the highest quality, of the M00K brand. The biggest importer of Kazakhstan's copper is China. The country purchases 45% of the entire volume produced here. 30% of Jeskazgan's copper is purchased by Turkey and 9% by the UK. Therefore, the export share is 84%, which is quite an impressive figure. In order to optimize exports, an effective transport logistics complex was established here. It includes a loading park, 2,000 wagons and a highway with a total length of 1,000 kilometers, which is connected with the National Railway Network. The enterprise devotes special attention to environmental issues. The byproduct of the copper smelting plant, sulfur hexide, is a harmful technological gas. Here it is processed, a semi-product is obtained, and then a new product produced. These technological gases undergo a rough degree of purification using dry electrofilters. Then by using wet electrofilters it is cleaned, and therefore we get ready for sale sulfuric acid. Simultaneously with the production of goods, overall production is being expanded here. Today a hydrometallurgy complex is being built. It will specialize in the processing of production wastes. It is not profitable to process using the traditional pyrometallurgic method, but hydrometallurgy is precisely the technology which is suitable and allows us to extract metals in a comprehensive way. The copper smelting plant gives an opportunity for the development of the towns of Jaskazgan and Sotpaev. In the recent years, the cities changed right before our eyes. Today they are expanding, but not just horizontally, but also vertically. The residents of the two neighboring towns joke that in Kazakhstan there are only two mono cities which have nine-story buildings. One is Jaskazgan and the other, our very own Sotpaev. Nine high-story residential buildings with a total of 460 apartments have been commissioned. By the end of this year, the construction of another six high-story buildings will be complete. And this year, the construction of 25 high-rise buildings was commenced and is set to be completed by next year. The construction of high-rise residential buildings is not just the final aim, but a prospective plan for the city's development. A number of industrial projects will be realized in the suburbs of Sotpaev. Among them, the launching of a plan for the processing of oxidized ore and cathode copper. Personnel will be needed for the new enterprise. They will be hired not just from among the residents of Sotpaev, but also nearby towns. That is why the city's authorities have already launched the resettlement program. The new residents will be accommodated in the high-rise residential buildings. Coming up next, the treasures of Karajal. Karajal is located 320 kilometers away from Karaganda. The name of the small city translates from Kazakh as Black Main. Its history commenced in the 1930s when Soviet geologists discovered deposits of iron ore here. From a distance, this locality, in terms of its shape, reminded it of the horse main. And hence its name was born, Karajal. Today, Karajal is a monotown under the regional authority. It is located 350 kilometers away from Karaganda. Orkena Tasu is considered to be the industrial heart of Karajal. This enterprise, which is part of the Arcelor Mittal holding, is engaged in the development of the western Karajal deposit field. In Kazakhstan today, 15 iron ore deposits fields are being actively developed. This list includes the West Karajal, a deposit field which is located next to the town of a similar name. In terms of its reserve volumes, it is not the largest in the country. However, it serves as the main raw material base for the Timirtau metallurgy plant. 
The ore of the West Karajal deposit field is a mix of hematite and magnetite. These minerals are also called red iron ore and black iron ore. It contains 52% of iron and 30% of manganese ore. The ore has no harmful materials, no phosphor or sulfur. The confirmed reserve volumes are 567 million tons of iron ore, as well as 347 million of manganese ore. Work at this deposit field is conducted at the depth of more than 500 meters. The technological process of ore extraction entails a number of stages. Blasting works, unloading of the raw materials to the rolling stock, then sifting and grinding of the ore. In terms of the barium sulfide volumes, Kazakhstan is first in the world. Its deposits are concentrated in a number of regions of the country, including the Karaganda region. Thanks to such chemical properties like high density and ability to absorb X-radiation, barium sulfide enjoys great demand in the petrochemical sector. A couple of kilometers away from Karajal, the barium sulfide deposit field, Bestobe, is located. Its reserves are evaluated at 2.5 million tons. The processing of barium sulfide from this field is realized at the new industrial complex, which was built through the joint efforts of Kazakhstan's company, Karajal Operating, and the American holding, Ali Burton. Here, the Atlas Bar is produced, which is used in the drilling of oil wells. The annual projected capacity of the plant is 200,000 tons. We have reached the 50% of our annual production level. This is connected with the construction and repair works that we're conducting at the moment. We're also building a jigging complex on the deposit field to improve the quality of the Atlas Bar. The expansion of production is connected with the export plans of the enterprise. The Atlas Bar of improved quality is always on demand on the markets abroad. The list of potential importers include oil companies from the CIS, Russia, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan and the countries of Western Europe. Coming up next, the second win of the Jairem Mining Processing Complex. The Jairem Mining Processing Complex. Over its 40-year history, this complex went through great highs and lows. In 2015, when the enterprise was on the brink of bankruptcy, it was bought out by a large Kazakhstani ore mining company. Thanks to this, the Jairem Mining Processing Complex got a second wind. Starting in 2015, the Jairem Mining Processing Complex became a subdivision of the Kostink Corporation. Among its new assets, crushing and sorting equipment, quarries and the manganese enrichment plant. But the company's plans are not limited by this. This factory was recently modernized. Today, in addition to manganese, lead preconcentrate is produced here. The project capacity of the plant, 272,000 tons of products annually. With the addition of reacting agents, there is a selective discharge of useful zinc and lead minerals. And the chain of technological processes allows us to break down these metals and obtain separate zinc and lead concentrates. Kostink intends to invest 100 billion tenge in the development of the complex. It is planned to build an enrichment plant with a processing capacity of 5 million tons of ore annually and for the production of flotation concentrate in the volume of 500,000 tons per year. This is equivalent to 126,000 tons of zinc and around 60,000 tons of lead. Abundant reserves of mineral resources and ore mining sector with products oriented for export to large markets abroad. A developed railway network, which now has a new direction for development thanks to the construction of two new lines, Jeskazgan Beineu and Arkalok Shubarkol. 
Kazakhstan is a country that does not have access to the world's oceans. That is why the formation of optimal transport logistics, construction of highly efficient infrastructural objects, is an opportunity to compensate for such a geographic location. The center of Kazakhstan, which is located on the territory of the Karaganda region. Here there is simultaneously a number of different resources that are important for the development of the country, mineral, industrial and transport related. That is why the future of the region depends on their tight union.